Several years ago, I built my first smart home using four immutable, unbreakable principles. First rule, all smart home devices must also work dumb via an on-device button or hardware remote. Rule two, everything must be seamlessly controllable from a singular app or central interface. Rule three, all devices must be locally controllable without relying on an external server or company that could potentially discontinue support for the products that I own. And rule four, GTFO, a smart home should never activate automations at the wrong time or do things that I didn't ask for. If it gets in the way of daily life, it's out. Clearly, these rules resonated with many of you, and given my smart home is largely unchanged over the past four years, they've proven to be a reliable foundation. But the landscape of how to select smart home accessories has changed since my last video. A lot. <laughs> Mostly for the better, but hardly for the simpler. The culprit, of course, is matter. You've likely seen the Matter badge while shopping for gadgets. In simple terms, it's a smart home standard that ensures that devices made for Matter work with any system supporting Matter. That sounds really obvious and unhelpful, but unlike HomeKit or works with Alexa badges, the Matter badge guarantees platform agnostic compatibility because almost every major smart home platform is on board. So Matter works with iOS, with Android, with Alexa, SmartThings, Home Assistant, basically everything. However, Matter itself is simply the standard, the language, the application layer. It defines how devices communicate with each other and with your smart home ecosystem. Importantly, Matter certified devices embrace my third rule by avoiding the internet. They communicate directly on your local network using TCP or UDP over IPv6. So make sure that IPv6 is enabled on your router by checking your network settings. Now, to actually participate in this conversation, smart home devices well, they need a physical connection, which happens over one of three hardware data links, Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or Thread. Thread is something you've also definitely heard of, and it's something that's often confused with Matter, but they're not mutually exclusive. Matter is the platform, it's the software. And Thread, well, Thread is just the fancy name for a radio, like Wi-Fi or Ethernet. It's designed for smart homes, though. And in my opinion, it's preferable to just standard 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi because it consumes significantly less energy, making it ideal for battery-powered devices like sensors and switches that you're going to have in your smart home. Additionally, Thread operates as a self-healing mesh network in which each accessory acts as a relay to improve overall range and reliability. In contrast, Wi-Fi networks typically rely on a single router as the central point of connection, which can lead to congestion and decreased performance if a large quantity of devices are added, which is prone to happen in a larger smart home. Now, Thread needs a special piece of intermediate hardware called a border router. This Matter-compatible device connects to your local network via Ethernet or Wi-Fi, but has a special radio inside of it to communicate with all of the Thread devices in your house. Typically, this functionality is now built in something that's called a Matter controller. Uh, you'll often see them referred to as hubs. They're devices that serve as the connection between your local network and the greater internet, allowing for access to your smart home when you're, well, not home. Border routers, the Matter controllers, they're often talked about as different things, but frankly, they're typically the same. Apple TV and HomePods, for example, they serve as both a controller and a border router. So too does the uh, Nest Hub, recent Amazon Echo devices, Eero routers, and more. Okay, so this is all pretty logical, but things do start to get a bit confusing because some devices like uh, Philips Hue light bulbs, well, they can be controlled through matter even though they themselves aren't officially matter devices. <laughs> Hue bulbs communicate using Zigbee, not via thread or Wi-Fi. However, the Hue bridge, which is matter certified, acts as an intermediary, allowing you to control your Hue bulbs using matter but by passing those commands through the Hue bridge rather than going through your matter controller or thread radio directly. Whew. While this might seem a bit confusing and annoying, it's actually pretty cool. My Level Lock Plus Deadbolt is another example of a product that's a couple years old but was recently updated to natively support matter. Ecosystems that it didn't support at launch, it now supports today, without Level themselves having to work with those ecosystems individually. Matter just makes it work. That's at least the promise of Matter. You buy a device, and it works with whatever ecosystem you choose to use. But that's also the problem with Matter. It's not the ecosystem, it's merely the platform. And its implementation across ecosystems, as I'll soon explain, is a colossal just mess. 
When it comes to literal messes in the home, well, you may be interested in the brand new Eufy Robot Vacuum 3-in-1 E20, today's sponsor and the world's first detachable combo robot vac. I think it's a really handsome and unique design that's hyper versatile. I mean, you can clean carpets and floors with the powered brush roller, you can get furniture in tight spaces and handheld mode, or leave it to the robot mode for effortless maintenance with all of the expected flagship features. You've got millimeter level obstacle avoidance, superb mapping with app control, fast charging, and more, all in a single device. But that's just the start. With 30,000 pascals of suction in handheld mode and 8,000 pascals in robot mode, you can pick up just about any type of debris, small or large. And thanks to the Aero Turbo Cyclone Filtration System that looks super cool, by the way, you can capture 99.97% of particles, which is perfect for homes with pets or allergens. And you do all of this while avoiding the clogs that you'll find in most other stick vacuums. Now, what truly sets the E20 apart is hassle-free maintenance. Thanks to its versatile auto-emptying feature, all three cleaning modes automatically collect debris into a shared, sealed, three-liter dust bag that can go up to 75 days without needing to be emptied, saving your time and keeping your hands clean. This isn't just a vacuum, it's a smarter way to clean. Recognized with the CES 2025 Best of Innovation Award, the Eufy E20 combines groundbreaking technology with user-focused design. Whether you're navigating tight corners, deep cleaning carpets, or avoiding obstacles with its advanced laser-guided sensors, the E20 adapts seamlessly to every surface and scenario. Simplify your home cleaning with fewer tools and unmatched efficiency. Check out the Eufy E20 today and join the One is the New Smart movement for a better, cleaner future. Okay, now back to the chaos that is matter across different smart home ecosystems. Remember, matter is the unifying standard, but they can't control how each platform chooses to implement that standard into their ecosystems. First off, let's talk about adoption. Matter releases new versions pretty frequently. It's a, it's a newish thing after all, but there's no guarantee of when these new features will trickle down to your mobile OS or smart home integrator of choice. For instance, Matter version 1.2 was announced nearly a year and a half ago. We're all the way up to Matter version 1.4 right now, but platform adoption, it's all over the place. Amazon is mostly caught up with version 1.3. Good job, Amazon. Apple is barely cracking into version 1.2, and Google is out in the alley smoking doobies with his stoner friends and barely supports Matter 1.0. Here's an example. Robot vacuums are supported as part of Matter 1.2. Amazon and Samsung SmartThings jumped the gun. They've supported robot vacuums for almost a year now, and that's before robot vacuums even existed to be Matter certified. Now today, there are a select number of vacuums that are just getting Matter certified, but you buy one of those, well, it's not going to work on anything other than Samsung SmartThings or Amazon Alexa. Now, Apple is bringing vacuum support to iOS 18.3 in a couple months, so they're not too far behind. Uh, where's Google? Oh, taking a big giant doo-doo out in the street while nobody's looking? This staggered adoption means that your shiny new Matter device might not work with your platform of choice, if at all. And that part is so important, if at all. Because not all ecosystems are required to adopt every part of the Matter specification. This means that you might buy a Matter device expecting full compatibility because well, that's what Matter promises, only to find out, uh oh, this isn't supported right now, and it might never be. Let me give you an example. Dishwashers are a part of Matter 1.2. They are supported by Amazon, but not by Apple. Now, refrigerators are also a part of Matter 1.2. They're supported by Samsung SmartThings, but not by Amazon. In fact, SmartThings supports almost all of Matter 1.3, even though Samsung doesn't make a single Matter certified appliance. Meanwhile, Google's new mascot is a confused snail. Now you might be thinking, dishwashers, refrigerators, we're really getting out into the weeds on the smart home stuff. At least all the normal smart home gadgets that people actually want and use are supported by Matter, right? No, they're not. Cameras, doorbells, security systems, none of those are yet a part of Matter. You're wondering, as I did, why would the CSA, the body in charge of matter, not mandate that each release receive full adoption by its ecosystem partners? Well, it's because they don't have the leverage to require it. And it's honestly as simple as that. Also, because, well, it's nonsensical for smaller implementations. Remember how I said at the beginning that the promise of matter is that any matter ecosystem can integrate with any other matter device? Yeah, here's a theoretical example, okay? Matter version 1.3 being support for range hoods above your cooktop. Let's say that I am a range hood maker. I have an app, as I have always had, an app that offers more features than what's offered by the Matter standard, and this is definitely a thing, by the way. Like robot vacuums, the Matter spec only supports uh, start and stop, 
vacuum mop, error reporting, battery status, and, and that's about it. You are not going to be going to the store buying a robot vacuum that doesn't have an app and just magically integrates into Apple Home via Matter anytime soon or maybe ever. Okay, so back to my example, range hoods. I can leverage the Matter platform and my tiny single app ecosystem to gather data from, say, air quality sensors around the house. When I detect that it starts to get stinky, I can automatically turn my range hood on. And uh, I can go even further than that. Let's say I have lights that are in the room. I can turn them on when you're in the kitchen, uh, when I detect that uh, something is happening. But I probably don't want or need to integrate support for laundry machines, right? It makes sense to not require that everything be adopted, but that leads to the issue of full adoption. And it gets even worse because you might be led to believe, sir or madam, that your lights and air sensors and everything you added into Apple Home via Matter will just show up in my Range Hood app, right? It seems logical. No. Matter offers what they call multi-admin support, which is supposed to allow any Matter device to be controlled and viewed by multiple smart home systems simultaneously. Alexa, Google, Apple, my range hood app, anything. And this sounds great on paper, especially for homes with both Android and iOS devices. But in practice, it's a bit of a nightmare because you have to add every single device to every secondary platform manually. So let's say I use Apple Home and I just bought a new widget. I can scan its matter code, I can add it to Apple Home, name the device, put it in a room, yada yada, standard setup. Okay, it's, it's all done, it's set up. Now if I want to add it to say Google Home via matter, I have to go to that specific device enable matter pairing mode, and then I'm given a new 11-digit code different from the matter QR code on the device to add it to Google Home. Then, once it's added to Google Home, I can see the state change and I can control it, but no other information is passed over. Not the name of the device, not the room that it's in, not the automations that are attached to it, because that's not part of the matter platform. That's part of my chosen smart home ecosystem, Apple HomeKit. And that sucks. <laughs> now, matter 1.4 is attempting to fix this problem with a feature that they call Fabric Sync, which allows you to authorize every device on one ecosystem to be automatically added to another ecosystem and vice versa. So I can link, theoretically, my Apple Home to my Google Home app, and then I can just have them keep track of new devices and state changes uh, automatically. Problem solved, right? No because Fabric Sync does not require that name and location be shared, at least not in this spec. So I can add 10 new light bulbs to Apple Home, but they'll just show up as generic lights, unlabeled, in some default room in Google Home. That's almost more confusing than just adding them one at a time. And that's assuming, by the way, that Google and Apple even choose to adopt support for Fabric Sync, because yet again, they are not required to. Every matter spec is optional. Despite being fully entrenched in the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, I have slowly but surely started to move nearly all of the devices that I set up years ago to be managed by Home Assistant. What began as a nerdy, overcomplicated venture to get unsupported devices onto different platforms, something that Matter theoretically renders unnecessary, has now evolved into one of the most polished, one of the most user-friendly, and certainly the most powerful ecosystem available. In fact, Matter 1.4 support is already baked into Home Assistant. It's the first and only platform to support the latest version of the standard, which is a pretty big deal and offers big changes. But here's the thing. Because Home Assistant is so capable, matter doesn't even really matter. My garage door runs on MQTT, not matter. My gym lights are controlled by Tuya, not matter. My ice maker is controllable as a dummy light switch because ice makers are not part of HomeKit or frankly any smart home platform. I am using some weird proprietary app and being man in the middle to get it added to my HomeKit setup. My smart home is bizarre and yet it's bulletproof and I did not need matter nor Apple's blessing to make it happen. But most importantly, and this is so important, powerful bridges, not part of the matter spec at all, can add all of my devices from Home Assistant to Apple Home, to Google Home, to Alexa, to SmartThings, and any other platform while retaining device names, room locations, and sync state cross-platform. It supports cameras, whoa, mind blown, what an advanced feature. And it even makes these unsupported cameras capable of platform-specific strengths that will never be part of an open alliance, like HomeKit Secure Video. I have cameras, not designed for HomeKit, not designed for Matter, that are uploading footage to iCloud 24 seven for free, all available at no cost, because this is an open source, community-driven project, one that will never get abandoned, one that will have support for these niche Matter accessories that big tech ecosystems will never prioritize support for. It's the 
the exact opposite of just good enough. It is an ongoing project that's continually evolving, making it the best smart home solution for those who want the most control over their home. I want to emphasize that Matter is overall a net positive. It's driving the industry towards improved cross-platform compatibility and smoother integration between ecosystems. I really do believe that most major players, Apple, Amazon, SmartThings, maybe not Google, they're, they're aiming to deliver the best experience for their users possible, and Matter is representing a step in that direction. Uh, the fact that things are running locally, aligning with my third rule, means that smart home e-waste will be a thing of the past. And it's a win because even platforms like Home Assistant, well, they're no longer going to need to rely on API calls and cookie session hijacking or weird man in the middle local hosts, awkward workarounds to force devices that weren't designed to function a certain way to be a certain way. That said, matter is just the foundation. While the ecosystems they're left to companies like Apple to determine what is worthy of inclusion in the home app, or to Google, which has proven unmotivated to do basically anything. Get off your butt, Google. Matter gets you about 70% of the way to a solid smart home. But even if they tried to copy everything that Home Assistant did, they would still be at the mercy of companies. That's why open source tools that maybe require a little bit more setup and technical expertise will likely remain the key to creating a smart home that is versatile, that is adaptable and compatible across ecosystems and future-proof in ways that matter will probably never achieve. Though I sure hope I'm wrong. Can't we all just play nice? Right, Google? Google? Hello? Hey! Thanks so much for watching and <laughs> stay snazzy.